LSD is not dangerous physically. It can be dangerous psychologically to someone who's not prepared to confront the energy and the grandeur and the wisdom of the divine process. It scares you out of your mind. There's no doubt about that. No one should take LSD unless they're in a state of grace, unless they have a spiritually uh, competent person to guide them. How do you answer the questions of parents who, who are concerned about the use of LSD and marijuana for their children? Well, I consider one of my roles in American Society Day as being a UN interpreter between the younger generation and the older generation. They just don't talk the same language. The older generation drinks martini and whiskey uh, on weekends and can't understand uh, why their children like to take them. Uh. <laughs> I want to point out that these are young people who are hungering for older people, for their parents to listen to them. These, these youngsters want to share with their parents the uh, grandeur and the glory that they are encountering. And I think it's tragic that more parents aren't listening to these uh, interesting and talented and unusual and creative youngsters. And my recommendation to parents who are concerned about your children who are being exposed to LSD and marijuana, there's no doubt about that, and there's nothing you can do about it. My advice is to sit down with your kids and ask them what they're learning, why they take it, and uh, learn from your children. And uh, perhaps uh, eventually, when you're spiritually ready, you'll turn on with your children if you think that's the right thing to do. To some, LSD is the instrument of a new religion. The high priest or guru of this religion is Dr. Timothy Leary who left Harvard University after the school objected to his experiments with the drug. We're not starting the religion to legalize and cover our activities. It's been well known to the American people and to the world for the last six years. We've been using marijuana and LSD for serious spiritual purposes. That's no secret. If Timothy Leary is the high priest of LSD, two of its apostles might be Ron and Jay Thielen who run the psychedelic shop in San Francisco's Haight-Ashbury district. We've never had this experience before. There's no tradition or no history in our country of a real spiritual kind of life. And we're just, we're, we're, we're confused right now. We're trying to find out what it means to, to have a spiritual, wholesome life and still be able to function daily, but still be able to live. Uh, one thing it does mean is that the symbols the symbols that our parents and the, the older generation that you speak about, the symbols that they live with, that they manipulate, are no longer meaningful, are no longer useful. When people talk about having bad trips, about uh, this doing uh, brain damage, being harmful, those people are setting up the bad trips they're talking about. If one goes into this experience thinking that it can be bad, uh, then there's a chance it'll be bad. The whole problem is that uh, legislators and doctors and psychiatrists, physicians, have uh, been pounding away at how dangerous this is because they have never had the joyous experience. Once you've had the joyous experience, uh, then you don't talk about the dangers and it going bad because that's all based on fear. And it's getting out, getting over fear, getting out of fear that, that uh, this whole community is all about. I think it's a worldwide revolutionary thing. I think young people all over the world are uh, aware that uh, uh, we have to change. Everybody has to change. And I think this is indicated in uh, cities like Amsterdam, where there are young people have, a, have won a seat on the city council, the provost. It's indicated by the, the growth of the underground press in this country. There's uh, the East Village Other out of New York, the LA Free Press, uh, the paper out of East Lansing, Michigan, uh, the Oracle here in Haight-Ashbury. Uh, there's a whole underground press net network uh, building up in, within the country. And uh, every major city in the country has a, has a community. Within the psychedelic generation, it's mostly, I think, a white middle class movement right now. Um, the, there's not many black people in it, but they're coming in it. And the people within the white, within the white people within this psychedelic generation refer to people <coughs> such as like John Coltrane, uh, Albert Eiler, Archie Shep. These are people that I find that can give me intelligence and wisdom that can teach me. These are all avant-garde musicians that are playing liberated, joyous music. And those uh, are the kind of black people that I find that can help me. America's true spiritual leaders, I think, would be a good way to describe them. Also, uh, the rock and roll people. Uh, I, d I don't think there's a major rock and roll group uh, in the world that's not turned on. 
Uh, I'd like to say one more thing about San Francisco. I think San Francisco is the holy city. I think it's going to be the Mecca of the West. And uh, what I'm going to propose in January, although I don't know about the ethical propriety of it, is that uh, Allen Ginsberg run for mayor of San Francisco. Although the idea of a turned-on mayor of a holy city called San Francisco might be called psychedelic humor, it also points up the problem of how to control or channel the use of a powerful new drug in a society in which too many already are too willing to seek solutions to life's problems through drugs.